بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد The seventh juz of the Quran or the seventh para is a continuation of Surah Al-Ma'idah Half the juz is Surah Al-Ma'idah and then the second half uh, moves on to the next surah which is Surah Al-An'am As for uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah then uh, the, the juz begins by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning to us who the closest uh, group is to us from among Ahlul Kitab and who the furthest are from us. Uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of their feelings towards us. Uh, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the Jews are the most, uh, you know, severe in enmity and animosity towards us. They have the most enmity and hatred for us. And as for the Christians, then they are, uh, you know, the softest towards us. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, talks about or mentions uh, several rulings or legislations uh, concerning different things. Uh, such as uh, uh, rulings pertaining to hunting and, uh, you know, game. Uh, also, uh, and that is uh, while we are in a state of ihram. Uh, and also uh, the prohibition of uh, al-khamr, intoxicants and alcohol. And also rulings pertaining to al-ayman, uh, taking oaths. Uh, and other rulings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, here uh, towards the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah. Uh, after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, takes us to um, uh, the story of Isa alayhi salam with his people. Uh, when they, uh, they ask Isa alayhi salam to bring down from heaven uh, a Ma'idah. Uh, uh, basically, uh, a, uh, a a tablecloth uh, full of food, uh, and so uh, Isa alayhi salam asked Allah subhanahu wa taala to do that, and it was one of the miracles. It was one of the many miracles of Isa alayhi salam. And then uh, the very end of Surah Al Maidah is basically that discussion uh, that will take place on the Day of Judgment between Isa alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask Isa alayhi salam did, did I command you to uh, claim that I am your partner and so uh, the very last verses of Surah Al-Ma'idah uh, are basically a declaration from Allah and from Isa alayhi salam that they are free and innocent of what the Christians uh, attributed to Allah and to Isa alayhi salam as being a partner of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a son of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, after that we move on to Surah Al-An'am. Uh, which is basically translated as the cattle or livestock. Uh, and this surah, uh, although it is named after uh, the cattle or livestock, uh, the majority of this surah uh, talks about uh, a tawheed, the tawheed of Allah, and refuting the mushrikun who associated partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It also talks about uh, uh, affirming uh, resurrection uh, and that there will be life after death and also uh, prophethood and how Allah sent prophets and these prophets were true prophets sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the issue of al-an'am or the cattle, uh, then this is at the very end of the surah in the next juz uh, and even then uh, the, the topic there is not about, you know, uh, rulings pertaining to uh, slaughtering cattle, uh, livestock, but rather to, to affirm once again uh, the whole issue of Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, 
Uh, and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins this surah, Surah Al-An'am, uh, by praising himself and by uh, you know, affirming the whole issue of uh, the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like he is the one who created everything, likewise he is the one who alone deserves to be worshipped. Uh, and you will find uh, throughout these verses in Surah Al-An'am that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uses logical arguments, logical arguments to refute the claims of those who try to associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses our minds and our intellects to say that, you know, uh, it doesn't make sense for you to worship other than Allah or to ascribe partners to Allah uh, when these partners do not deserve anything of worship. Uh, but rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like He has all attributes of rububiyah, of lordship, uh, such as creation, sustaining, and so on and so forth, uh, similarly, He alone deserves to be worshipped. This is only logical. Uh, Later on in this uh, surah, in Surah Al-An'am, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions the story of uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam and uh, how uh, he addressed his father, uh, Azar, as Allah mentions his name in this uh, story, in Surah Al-An'am. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, you know, affirmed the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and, uh, you know, refuted the claims of his people who used to worship the stars and the sun and the moon. And so, you know, he, he went and looked at these creations of Allah and said that, you know, the sun, the moon, the stars, uh, they disappear, you know, at one time or the other. So how can they be true uh, gods? Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings our attention to the descendants of Ibrahim alayhi salam and how they were prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were true prophets sent to their people, all of them calling to the same message and that is the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that is uh, what was mentioned in brief uh, in this uh, first part of Surah Al-An'am. And with that we conclude. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu wa la ilaha illa ant astawfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa